Um, two final things. Um, the last 10 years, some great things have happened, not just at Cal IT, but at the other institutes. But the next 10 years are going to be infinitely more exciting. I am convinced you will change the world. The people in this audience will change the world. The people at uh, Irvine will change the world. Uh, because we didn't get the building up and running until uh, five years ago. Uh, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of work. We have about 200 companies uh, involved. Again, that was my vision. Get the private sector involved. You have the private sector involved. These institutes will last. I want to also um, acknowledge the important work of Erwin Jacobs. He is one of my personal heroes. He epitomizes academic innovation, not only as a professor at MIT, but then as a professor at UC San Diego. Uh, he invented a zillion things, two companies, Linkabit, that he sold for over a billion dollars in the 60s, and Qualcomm, uh, which is the leading employer in uh, San Diego County. Uh, so just by himself, he's enhanced the, uh, uh, the lifestyle and the productivity of tens of millions of people uh, around the earth. And I thank him also for his contributions uh, of Qualcomm, uh, which I assume Marianne, or Marianne are on a continuing basis here, uh, here at um, uh, UC San Diego. I, I drove up. I know there's a Irvine's. I mean, there's a Irwin Jacobs School of Engineering. And it's just as we have the dean. Just as we have the uh, Atkinson Building that uh, Cal IT is housed in here in San Diego. I also want to thank uh, Ramesh Rao for. He is the um, UC San Diego Division Director of Cal IT. Larry Smarr, who was the founding director of Cal IT, uh, and just tell you how proud I am. Great stuff to date. The best I know is yet to come, uh, and our future is in your hands. Like this rocket ship, we launched it, but you're the pilots. So um, take us somewhere exciting. Uh, God bless you all. Finally, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce um, one of, a person whom I've been a huge fan of for years, Lynn Shank, the ubiquitous Lynn Shank, uh, who I love, introduced me to him at her home um, in, uh, when was that, Dick, in early 80s, I think, 80, 81, 82. Dick had been the director of the National, uh, National Science Foundation and had come on recently as the chancellor of UC San Diego. And as such, you know, obviously garnered more grants from the National Science Foundation than any other campus and was a huge. Bob, I've already bragged about you. Thank you for coming. I said, told people you were teaching Bob Dines. Let's give Bob Dines a round of applause. Former president of the University of California and the chancellor of UC San Diego when the institutes were first conceived. But Dick uh, uh, not only was a phenomenal, um, um, I, I want to brag here about UC San Diego for just a second. Forgive me, Chancellor Drake. The, the two of the last three presidents of the University of California have come out of uh, uh, UC San Diego, Dick Atkinson and, uh, and Bob Dine. So um, Dick uh, went on to be president of the University of California. And l let me just share with you. When, you. when you have $400 million and you tell the legislature, we're not spending this money on your favorite pet project, we're spending it on my favorite pet project. That is a hard sell. That's why you need Lynn Shank up there smoothing the waters. And on more than one occasion, the money for this institute went out of the budget on more than one occasion and had to be rescued by Lynn, you know, myself, Dick Atkinson, and get back into the budget. So this was not smooth sailing because they wanted the money spent on ongoing programs. I knew with all the money that was coming in from the dot-com boom, that we could make a down payment on California's future and we could make an investment in the next generation. And I was determined to leave something behind to help uh, future generations. We're all the beneficiaries of what Silicon Valley did, what's been done in the 80s and early 90s through bioengineering and biomedicine. And you know the future is unlimited for Cal IT2 uh, and the other institutes. So Dick not only helped put out fires, he convinced the regents it was a good thing to do. He convinced the regents we should have at least a three-to-one match. Uh, so none of this would have happened without Richard Lerner, without Bob Dines, without Lynn Shank, and without Dick Atkinson. So it's my pleasure to call to the, to the microphone the former chancellor of UCSD and the former president of the University of California in a building that bears his name, Richard Atkinson.
You've gotten a sense this morning of the governor's enthusiasm for this whole enterprise. It is hard to believe that 10 years have passed, uh, but uh, it's a perfect moment in time to honor Gray Davis for what he's done for the University of California. Yeah, I met Gray in 1980. Uh, the then governor of the state, uh, Governor Jerry Brown, I hope a few of you remember his name, uh, Gray was his uh, chief of staff, and uh, they had set up a commission, the California Commission on Industrial Innovation. Gray, I hope you remember all of that. Uh, and uh, it was a commission that was really focused on policy issues related to innovation. It was quite a unique commission. Uh, Steve Jobs was a member. David Packard was a member. The head of National Semiconductors was a member. The head of the... Uh, United, United Auto Workers were a member. I was also a member of that uh, commission. And uh, it issued its report in 1982, and it was a great report. It was called Winning Technologies, a New Strategy for California and the Nation. It's on the Internet. Take a look at it. There are 50 recommendations. But that was just at the point where Jerry Brown was completing his eight years as governor, he was stepping down, a new governor came on, and uh, a lot of the recommendations were lost along the way. But what was evident throughout those discussions with the commission was that Gray Davis was very much involved in this whole notion of innovation, how to make the state of California a really productive and innovative uh, inst uh, organization. And after that commission finished its work, Gray began to move around the state, meeting with CEOs of high-tech companies in Silicon Valley, in Los Angeles, here in San Diego. I remember on several occasions going with him to meet at Qualcomm with the various people there, with one of the early HyperTech, uh, one of the early biotech companies. And it was clear that Gray was really not only committed to the idea, but had a deep understanding of what it took to move from the research laboratory into applications and the like. He later became lieutenant governor of the state and as a lieutenant governor was a regent of the University of California, was an incredibly strong supporter of the university in that role. But when he became governor of the university, that was the moment in time where his commitment to the University of California really became evident. There are so many projects I could list that he was involved in in his role as governor. I'm just going to list three of them, one being Cal I, uh, the California Institutes, but three projects that relate to this area in particular. He was a champion for what was called a program. It was called uh, the Industry University Cooperative Research Program. This was a program where scientists from industry, engineers and scientists from industry, could mix with scientists and engineers at the University of California, a joint uh, grant uh, that would be funded on a one to three ratio. That's uh, Gray always wanted outside money and everything. A one to three ratio uh, with one dollar of state funds, three dollars of uh, uh, private funds uh, to pursue various research projects. Uh, that grew like wildfire. The last year I was president, it was about $300 million per year. 600 companies across the state were involved with, uh, um, with different campuses of the University of California in these uh, activities.